In this video, we are going to talk about two things. First, baselines and second, the sequence of steps to train a supervised machine learning model using scikit-learn. Recall that in supervised machine learning, we are given training data in the form of X and Y. And what we want to do is we want to find this mapping function f that relates x to y. Once we have the mapping function, we can use the mapping function to predict targets of these new examples. So the main thing we want to do in supervised machine learning is finding this mapping function, which can be used to predict targets of new examples. Let's build a very simple supervised machine learning model for our toy quiz to grade prediction problem. That is, we will find a very simple mapping function f, which we can use to predict labels or targets of new examples. Here is our toy quiz to grade prediction data set. The target column here is this quiz to column. And here is what we decide to do. We look at value counts of this quiz two column, which is our target column. And we notice that the grade not A plus occurs 11 times, whereas grade A plus occurs 10 times in this data. And based on this information, we decide that for all examples, we will always predict not A plus because it occurs more frequently in our data. So whatever example is given to you, we will always predict not A plus. Sounds like a reasonable strategy, right? Not a very intelligent strategy, but sounds reasonable that we just find the most frequent label in our data and we predict that as the target for all examples. So this was an example of a baseline. Baseline is this simple machine learning algorithm or a model based on simple rules of thumb. Now you might be wondering, this doesn't really sound very intelligent and why should we even care about building baselines? If we are just picking this uh, most frequent label and we are not even using the information given in features, what's the point? The point of baselines is that they provide a way to sanity check your machine learning models. Later in the course, we will be developing some complicated machine learning models. And when we develop such models, we need some reference point to examine whether our complicated models are doing better than that reference point or not. If we put a lot of effort, if we build some complicated machine learning model, and if it is not performing better than simple baselines, then what's the point, right? So that's baseline. In supervised machine learning, before training any machine learning model, the usual practice is training a baseline. And that's what we will do now. In scikit-learn, the baseline model for classification is called dummy classifier. So let's train dummy classifier on our toy quiz to grade prediction problem. Now in scikit-learn, Whenever you want to train a machine learning model, there are a number of steps you need to perform. The first step is reading the data. Usually the data comes in a tabular format in supervised machine learning. And in Python, for example, you can use pandas to read this data. The next step is separating X and Y. Usually the data comes as one table and you need to separate your features and target from that table. The third step is creating a classifier object. In scikit-learn, all machine learning models are implemented in their own classes. And before training the model, before using the model, you need to instantiate that class object. So this third step is creating classifier object once we have the classifier object, then the next step is fitting the classifier, where most of the work is done for many classifiers. Then the fifth step is predicting on new examples. So after fitting the classifier, after fitting the model, now you have this mapping function 
that you can use to predict on new examples. And sixth step is scoring the model. Once you have the model and you can predict with that model, you want to know how well your model is performing. So this sixth step is scoring the model step or evaluation step. So let's look at these steps one by one now. First step is reading the data. This is our data set. As we saw before, our X are these first seven columns and our Y here is this quiz two column, which is our target column. Now the first step is separating X and Y. Again, we have seen this before. To separate X and Y, what we do to create X, we just drop our target column from the data frame and for Y, we just select that target column. So now we have our X and Y. The next step is creating a classifier object. Right now we are training our dummy classifier that is scikit-learn's baseline model for classification. So first thing we need to do is importing that classifier. Here we are importing the classifier. And the next step is creating a class object. Okay, so here we are creating class object of this dummy classifier and we are asking it to use this most frequent strategy that we used before. Now that we have our classifier object, we have instantiated our classifier, we can call fit. And in dummy classifier, in this baseline classifier, this fit doesn't really do much work because we are just picking the most frequent label from the target column. But in most of the machine learning classifiers, the hard work is done when we call this fit method. Then the next step is prediction. Now we have our model. This is our model function. And using that model, now we can predict on examples. So here I'm just predicting on our training data, our X. And these are the targets given by this predict method. And as expected, it's predicting not A plus for all examples, because that's what we asked it to do. We asked it to uh, use this most frequent strategy. And as we saw before, the most frequent label in our data set is not A plus. Now we have our model, we can predict using our model. Now an important step is evaluating our model. In scikit-learn, we can evaluate our model using this method called score. For classification problems, by default, this score method gives the accuracy of the model. That is the proportion of correctly predicted targets. So in our case, if we look at the accuracy, the accuracy here is uh, 0 0.524. Okay, so when we call dummy classifier.score and we have to pass X and Y here, then it gives us the accuracy. So if you remember, uh, we have around 21 examples and 11 examples have the target not A plus and 10 examples have the class A plus. And we are using this most frequent strategy. So it's going to predict not A plus for all examples. And so in this particular case, our accuracy is going to be close to 0 0.5. Now, sometimes you will also see people reporting error instead of accuracy. And error is just one minus accuracy. Okay, so here I'm printing error, which is just one minus uh, dummy classifier dot score. Now, when you call score, what happens under the hood? It calls predict on all examples in X. Then it compares predictions with actual Y because we have targets for all examples in X. So these are our true targets and there are predictions given by our machine learning model. And it compares these two things and returns accuracy in case of classification. So here is the summary of our fit, predict, and score. 
and the general pattern here is first we read the data then we split x and y so we create x and y then the next step is creating classifier object and then we fit the classifier we use the fit model uh, for predictions and we also uh, use this fit model for scoring okay so here we are scoring and here we are predicting on some new examples okay i have created some two new examples and i can use my classifier to predict on these new examples and it's predicting not a plus in both cases as expected and you will be exploring dummy classifier more in your homework assignment we can also do the same thing for regression problems scikit-learn's baseline model for regression problems is called dummy regressor in case of classification we predicted most frequent label from the target column but that doesn't really make sense in the context of regression right in regression problems our target is continuous and the values in our target column are going to be fairly unique so in case of regression the baseline usually predicts the mean or median or some constant value of the training set for all examples let's train a regression baseline model using scikit-learn again we are following a number of steps here first we are importing dummy regressor then we are reading the data now here we are using our quiz 2 grade prediction toy data set for regression then we are separating x and y we are creating class object we are fitting our model we are scoring the model and we are predicting on new examples and here are predictions given by the model now this is a regression problem so we are predicting continuous values now now in case of regression fit and predict paradigms are similar to classification but the score method in the context of regression is not accuracy because accuracy doesn't really make sense in the context of regression you want to kind of measure how close the true value and the prediction are they are not going to be exactly the same but you kind of want to make sure they are close to each other so in case of regression problems when you call score on the class object it's going to return something called r square score how to interpret this r square score the maximum r square score is one so if you have perfect predictions the r square score is going to be one now this score can be negative and when you have negative r square score that means your predictions are really bad your model is really bad and for dummy regressor that is your baseline model this score is going to be close to zero as we see here we won't go into the details about r square score right now we will look at that later in the course but for now it's enough for you to know that when you call score in the context of regression it's going to give you something called r square score and the interpretation of r square score is that you can have one a score of one for perfect predictions when the score is negative then your model is really bad and for your baseline model that is your dummy regressor this score is going to be close to zero so that's what i want to say about baselines for now if you want to make sure that you understood what we just discussed there are some practice questions for you in the associated notebook